Every neighborhood's got that certain kind of house, you know? Needs a paint job, something awful. And you never see anybody going in or coming out. Well, kids all say it's haunted. Here in East Hampton, that house would have to be Grey Gardens. Some folks say the women who live inside are just a couple of cat ladies, but the truth, they used to be American royalty. Coming up, you'll meet one of them in a performance from Grey Gardens. Welcome a two-time Tony nominee for Best Actor in a Musical, Patrick Wilson. Every family has one eccentric relative, but beloved former First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis had two. Once upon a time, her Aunt Edith and cousin Edie led a glittering life of wealth and privilege in a Long Island mansion called Grey Gardens. But by the mid-1970s, they had become recluses, sharing the house with mice, raccoons, and 52 cats, which I will now name. There was Lefty, no, sorry. In this number from our third nominee for Best Musical, Little Edie turns her cousin Jackie's famous sense of fashion on its head with her own subversive sense of style. From Grey Gardens, here is Tony nominee, Christine Ebersole. How high! You look absolutely terrific, honestly. Mother wanted me to come out in a kimono, so we had quite a fight. The best kind of clothes for a protest pose is this ensemble of pantyhose both over the shorts worn under the skirt that doubles as a cape. To reveal you in capri pants, you fashion out of ski pants in a jersey knit designed to fit the contour of your shape. Then cinch it with the cord from the drape. And that's the revolutionary costume for today to show the polo riders in Revolutionary costume has to say It can't be ordered from L.L. Bean There's more to living than Kelly Green And that's the revolution, I mean Da-da-da-da-da Just listen to this The Hamptons B, July 1972 The elderly bedridden aunt of former First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy Mrs. Edith Bouvier Beale, my very own mother, can you imagine? And her adult daughter, Miss Edie Beale, a former debutante, once known as Body Beautiful Beale. They called me Body Beautiful Beale, it's true. That was my, what do you call it, my um, sobriquet. <laughs> I'm living on Long Island in a garbage-ridden, filthy 28-room house with 52 cats, fleas, cobwebs, and virtually no plumbing. After vociferous complaints from neighbors, the Board of Health took legal action against the reclusive pair. Why, it's the most disgusting, atrocious thing ever to happen in America. Staunch! There's nothing worse, I tell you. Staunch! S-T-A-U-N-C-H. Staunch women! Da-da-da-da-da. Honestly, they can get you in East Hampton for wearing red shoes on a Thursday and all that sort of thing. I don't know whether you know that. I mean, do you know that? They can get you for almost anything. It's a mean, nasty Republican town. You fight City Hall with a Persian shawl that used to hang on the bedroom wall, pinned under the chin, adorned with a pin, and pulled into a twist. Reinvent the OJ Trouvé, make a poncho from a duvet, then you can be with Cousin Lee on Mr. Blackwell's list. Your full-length velvet glove hides the fist. And that's the revolutionary costume pour du jour. You mix, your match, and presto, a fashion manifesto. That's why a revolutionary costume's de rigueur. The rhododendrons are hiding spies, the pussy willows have beady eyes. Binoculars 